All right, thank you very much for staying with us. We'll quickly uh, go straight to our talking point. Honorable Prosper Iwe is a civil activist. He's right here with us in the studio. Honorable, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right, good to see Thank you. you. Well, you. The, the man I'm seeing right now is different from the face I saw uh, while you guys were on the streets of Ekbuma. Well, and, uh, you know, when we, when we are, <laughs> that's a protest there. Mm. During the protest, you know, the mood, the mood will change, but now this is me. This is you. This is me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, uh, the, the poor state of uh, Ekbuma Road mm -hmm. is, it shouldn't be overemphasized. Mm -hmm. Over the years, that road has been like that. Mostly that exists. Uh, and you people have been, your group have been on the, on the street for about a week. What is the rationale behind that? Well, I think very strongly, we, first of all, as ASAN people, we have always believed that the development of ASAN land, the ASAN nation, must be firmly rooted. You know, that has to do with government interventions to most of, most of the activities that we expect from government. You know, as a people, we, we wish above all things that all the social amenities that is, that is due to us, we should have those entitlements. It's our entitlement. We should have it, mm -hmm. you know. But over time, under review, we, like you're already aware, ASAN has been marginalized for too long. And we are not going to take this anymore. We are not going to sit down and fold our arms and be watching. We need to rise up to this occasion to ensure that government attention is drawn to this, this very um, show of shame. It's a show of shame to us. Now you're talking about show, show of shame. Uh, that route, yes. uh, it's, it's a linking route. Yes. Uh, to our next extent, people coming from the north who wants to go through Ewu Junction now, mm -hmm. uh, negotiating to Benin, yes. another part of the country, use that road. Some trailer drivers who are coming from the southwest heading towards the north, that used to be a shorter route. But, but do you think um, the whole delay is uh, politically motivated? Well, what else do you want me to say? We have the, the contract was awarded in 20, 2012 during the time of uh, President Goodluck Jonathan. And it's to the tune of about 120 billion. We have three contractors working on that road from uh, Okene Axis down to Benin. We have Modakat, we have Dantata and Saru. RCC. Modacart is working. So RCC is taking care of which part now? RCC, I think they are taking, uh, they, they are taking care of the Benin Axis. Then Modacart. Then I think, from Okene to Auchi. Then from Auchi then to Ekboma Axis. They are, three, they are in three phases. So, but why is Dantata slow? These other contractors, they have been working. Though the pace is slow, but they are seen to be doing something. There's a level of improvement. Yes, there's a level of improvement. But for the ASAN alignment, the Edo central part of the, of the contract, not a single asphalt has been dropped on the dual carriage, the proposed dual carriage. Why? Why are we marginalized? These are issues of concern. Let me also tell you, we have representative at the National Assembly. So I was actually getting there. Great. We have representative at the National Assembly. This is not about politics. We are not trying to whip in political sentiments or whatever. There is no political coloration to whatever activities we are doing to draw government attention. We have a senator, Senator Clifford Ahimemonia, Ahimemona Odia, distinguished senator of the Federal Republic. He's from Edo Central. He's representing the five local governments in Edo Central. Now, fortunately, we are lucky to have the senator as a vice chairman committee on works at the National Assembly. And it's also the, the chairman committee on foreign debt. And his constituency is suffering. The, his constituency, his primary constituency, mm. is, is taken aback. We are really marginalized. In all sectors, we are marginalized. Now, in Edo State at large, based on the tripod arrangement, Edo State have a senator from Edo, Edo South, senator, um, uh, senator from Edo South, you know, who is chairman committee on public account. We have Minister Clem Agba, who is budget and national planning. We have Ehaniri, who is uh, uh, the, Minister, the, of the Health. Minister of Health. So if we have these people in government, how come... Prominent people. Prominent persons in government mm. who are supposed to be speaking on behalf of the people. How come we are this marginalized? So are, are we saying that your voices are not being heard at the national level? Well, I am not really, I'm not concerned about whether, but we think that this is just 
a, a way to, to re-energize them, to stimulate them to do the right thing. We are not trying to say whether they have performed, underperformed, or overperformed, or whatever. But we just want them to do the right thing. It's a clear on call. And this is why we are here. Okay, now, over time, there have been cases where we see groups coming out right. to protest peacefully right. about the, the road. Now, your group is coming out now. Right. Do you think there's going to be any meaningful change away from what we've experienced in the past? We've had civil society come out. We've seen activists coming out to talk about this poor state of the road. The Asian Liberation Movement, my group is the Asian Liberation Movement, and I'm the coordinator of that group. We have young people who are ready to come out and continue to engage government. We have young people who are ready. They are not going to, they are not going to chicken out at the end of the day. We are resolute about it is not, it is not, gone are the days when you have people giving ultimatums to government. If our expectations are not met, as, as we speak now, don't attack according to them, they want to start to do palliative on that. Yes, we will agree to an extent because palliative, of course, will ease vehicular movement, provide so called provide so yeah. and, you know, palliative measures to ensure that people get, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, traffic is flowing and all of those things, pending on when, uh, you know, full construction work is going to be done on that road. But before then, we are not going to relent until we see that the, 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 the contractor mobilized fully and completely to site to begin to do the work. Now, you may have a pure intention. You may have a very good intention, have things you want to achieve out of this protest. But sometimes at the end of the day, you have people who just bank on it, talks in quotes. They will just take over the protest. And at the end of the day, the aim and objectives might be uh, not be defeated. achieved. Yeah, defeated, of course. Mm -hmm. So don't you think you may have some a negative set of people who may want to bank on this now and just start mm -hmm. carrying out some wicked social vices? In now, let me start by saying that from the beginning, we started the protest on the 22nd of August through to 29th. Now, during this protest, you know, to sustain the protest, we will need financial resources to be able to cater for the protesters and um, all, we, all, all the activities we need money for and all of those things. And I will tell you categorically that not a dime was collected from political actors. Hmm. Not a dime was collected from politicians to sustain the protest. It was a self-help uh, donations. So, so why, did you, why did you reject help from the political class? Because we, they are the people we are, we are asking for accountability, stewardship. We can't be, we can't, we can't be, we, we can't eat up, we can't have it. We can't, we, we can't go back to our vomit because we are demanding accountability from Senator Clifford Odia and the host of other, and the host of others at the National Assembly, including the Speaker, Marcus Onobo, who is uh, the youngest speaker that Edo State has, has, has ever produced. produced. Mm -hmm. And it's from that local government. This is where we have issues. So what are we doing? How come that we have people and they cannot speak on our behalf? It calls for issue of concern. As a matter of public importance and as a matter of urgency, government needs to move very fast before it things get out of hand. And you know that during the, during the protest, we have our own tax force that we're using to, to, to check activities of the protesters okay. to ensure that mm. we don't have, you know, uh, the bad ones trying to... Because to, to they will always come and disguise. They will always come on board to mm. try to cause uh, mayhem to, to road users and all of those things. Of course, if you, if you, you can confirm from the DPO, Ekoma Division, we had about seven persons to the, dif, to the DPO. We caught them, those people trying to steal goods from the uh, trailers, moving uh, products and all those things. You know, we caught them and we hand them over to the security apparatchik on ground. So that's to tell you that the protest is coordinated. In fact, we planned this protest a month before on the 22nd that we, we hit the street. And letters were written to Senator Odia. They thought we were joking. We wrote letters to Senator Before Odia. Before you started. Before we started. We wrote letters to Senator Odia. Odia. Sir, with due respect, we are asking you tell us what you have done over time under review. Mm. Let us look at the length to which you have gone so that we know how to come in. The Senator did not reply. The mm. member of the House of Representatives, Joe Ijawi, he was in copy of that letter. The governor of Edo State, Robin that letter. All critical stakeholders were in copy of that letter. But we didn't get response from them. So we felt, okay, that's, this, is, this is the only language that you will understand. 
we will go to the street and demand a, a redress of the matter. Okay. Now, now some people are of the opinion that um, given the contract to Dandata, yes. uh, it's not really a good one. This contract would have been given to an indigenous company. Maybe with that, they would have seen a, a form of result. Uh, do you share in that thought? I think, you know, um, according to Harold Lashwell and Abad Easton, they said in their own postulations that politics is who get what, when, and how. Politics is authoritative allocation of value. Now, if you go back to the north, the contractors building the roads, you will have um, Julius Berger and others prominent road construction companies. Mother Cat. Mother Cat and all the, all the, all, all the rest of them. Set Trapo and all the rest of them working. But when you have anything that has to do with Edo, the South South, look at the contractors they, they put to do the job. How come since 2012, when the contract was appointed, Dan Tata had not even dropped a single asphalt on this alignment? Now, they begin to rely very strongly on the right of way, that people on the right of way, they've gone to court, and because of the litigation, they cannot act on uh, mm. activities in this alignment. Because he's actually waiting for the whole case to uh, come out of the court. How long, how long are, we, are we supposed to wait? How long are we supposed but, to wait? But they are alleging that the indigents are the ones delaying the whole project. No, but I mean, uh, other than that, we have other areas that you don't have uh, buildings. They can start from there. They can continue construction work from there. But let us, if, let us also look at it from this perspective. You can bring them on board. Let's discuss it here. Bring people from the ministry, state minister of works or federal minister of works. They are here. The uh, controller general of work is resident in those states. Their secretariat, federal secretariat is at Aduawa. They are here. You can invite them. So let's talk about this. Let it not be like my words against their own words. You understand this? That's true. So it, it, it is a comparative analysis of what has been done over time on that review moving forward. But the controller general has actually said that they are on the matter. And uh, very soon, uh, the whole issue will be a thing of the past. Don't you think you should give them more time? There is a slogan. When governments don't want to do something, they tell you we are on top of the matter. And let me tell you, everything is under alarm. There is no cause for control. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Everything is under mm. alarm. Isan, Isan, really, we are peace-loving people. We don't, we, don't, we don't need to get to this extent to draw government attention. Look, we have been marginalized. Even in government, when it time comes for, for election, to be done, given electoral elections, oh, they will deceive us. Oh, don't worry, we'll give you speaker. How long are we going to be feeding speaker? How long are we going to be having a, a, a state, a state uh, a, a chairman of a party? Are we not supposed to have the governor? Is it not time that the ASAN is supposed to rise up to this occasion? Yes, let us have. It is our time now. In Miloko, according to what they will always say, it is <laughs> yeah. our time so, now. To so have for the, the ASANs now, our local. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, in Miloko, yes. It's our turn. <laughs> it's our turn. Uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you this last question now before we let you go. Now, the controller general uh, felt. Let's just give us time. We'll see how to put the road in order. But some people are of the opinion that they need palliative measure. But over time, we've seen how the palliative measure play out. By the time you have a palliative measure, you won't hear from them again until about five or six years. And when the road is bad again, we're back to square one. Uh, I'm, I'm still putting it to your group. Uh, don't you think you should just shield your sword and give them time to work? We are not ready for that. The, the time to wait is in the past. We have waited for too long. Now... This is serious business. It is not business as usual. What we want, what we are demanding, is a non-political matter. We are trying to tell government, please come and do this for us. We don't have time to wait. If other people are enjoying government, um, benefit from government, why, is, why would ASAM be marginalized? Why are we going to be at the back at all times? Why are we going to be marginalized in all sector? You talk about politics. By tripod arrangement, ASAN has been marginalized and taken aback for too long. In social amenities, ASAN, look at the roads. Go to Urumi today. You will see fed portions. You will be so surprised that, what, is this the same Urumi where we, where we had the, uh, the, the, the minister of works who just handed over to Fashala? You will be surprised. It's a shame that our people are just too selfish and too self-centered. 
our leaders, we are calling on all uh, critical stakeholders in the senatorial district to please come together. ASAN is the only community that we have, and we must by all means continue to protect ASAN. There is no political undertone to this movement that we are doing. There is no political coloration to it. But above all things, that we wish that Edo State would take into cognizance that ASAN, ASAN, ASAN land, Edo Central, is part of Edo State. Okay, thank you very much, Honorable Prosper Iyewe. Uh, well, for his group, it's a no retreat, no surrender. No surrender. Uh, we just hope and wish that uh, the necessary government agency sweep into action right. so that we can have a lasting solution. Thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. Thank you. We'll be Thank having you. you much later again. Uh, hopefully, like you suggested, let's try to balance the interview. Don't think so. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So. so we'll take a short pause now, and we'll be joined with our next guest on the show. Please don't go nowhere.